Hello and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker here with a tea that uh, haven't been haven't been able to look at a lot of these kind of teas. These are this is a Japanese tea. I'm going to go ahead and talk about it as I kind of proceed along with it because it's a matcha, and matchas need a little bit of uh, kind of unique attention. So this is from Aya, and this is their ceremonial matcha. This is a 30 gram uh, package here, 10 for $26.80. Um, there are different grades of matcha. There's a, there's a premium, there's a ceremonial grade. Ceremonial grade, of course, is one of the higher grades. Um, and then it goes down into food grades that gets put into your, your desserts, your ice creams, lots of, and other stuff. So, things to consider when making, when preparing a matcha. Uh, a bamboo scoop is nice. A sifter is good. Um, with scooping out enough that you want an almond size type scoop is, is a, one of the descriptions I've heard used. And for this, this time I'm actually going to be using two. The water that I have here has brought to, been brought to an early boil. And it's cooling there in my pitcher. Because you do want a lower temperature there. So that's something to consider. Now a sifter like this is often useful as well. Because of a couple of things. With a matcha, especially higher grade matchas, you are looking for um, a lack of uh, stem. Uh, thicker vein pieces, you want pure leaf, uh, the, the, the meat of the leaf you might say. So to do that, I don't want to force my um, matcha through the sifter, but I do want to break up clumps because with um, a couple of things, of course, humidity levels, even static electricity, if it's too dry, your, your matcha will clump up as well. So let me let me cap that, and and um, some people will actually store this in the re in the refrigerator to keep it fresher. It's a freshness is a is a consideration here. So I'm going to tap uh, this through. I'm getting some balled up uh, clumps there, which I'm going to use my bamboo again to gently break those open. I could just kind of toss those aside, but I'd rather have them all go through. They break up fairly easy. I just kind of gently tap them and they they break open for the most part. And it's, this would still catch any kind of pieces of uh, stem or vein that uh, that uh, need to be caught. Uh, what I have left are very small pieces. I bet I could probably break those up again. I'm going to try one more time there. And that looks good, actually. But I can tap that, and that's that takes care of that. There's a little bit left caught in the sifter there, but that's fine. So let me set that aside. I'm going to add my water, and again, this is kind of a two-handed procedure. I want to add water with one hand, and I want to use my whisk in the other hand. I want to move quickly. I'm looking for, in this particular case, I'm looking for a little bit of froth. So I'm adding my water slowly. A bowl like this is nice to have. It, uh, it has a flat bottom, so it allows you to move around the bottom, the, the bowl more easily with the whisk. I'm looking also, kind of checking, I don't want clumps stuck to the side of my bowl, so I'm kind of catching those every once in a while. A little bit splashing out here and there, but that's still good. Uh, right now, I've, I've, it's dissolved enough. Now I've got a nice broth building up there. Not that skilled yet. I, I really am not. It's a constant practice to develop that skill of getting the right whisk and uh, froth built up. But I have some froth, so I guess I should be happy. Let me set that aside. And I do want to, I'm going to, this is not the usual procedure, but I am going to pour this back into the pitcher so that you can see the color of this. There. Um, and actually, personally, I, I kind of uh, am glad to do that because it does kind of help to mix if there were any kind of uh, little bits that didn't dissolve well. Moving back and forth kind of helps keep it stirred and agitated. Looking at that, I also want to talk a little bit about the dry leaf here. Um, we talked about it, I talked about it as I was sifting it, but I did want to note the bright, the bright green this here. I've had some matchas that are move over towards a more yellow green. This is a nice positive um, 
brighter green, lighter color green. Good colors there. Aroma wise, nice uh, light, sweet, a little bit of kind of a, uh, a little bit of a, uh, oh, what would I want to say? There's a little bit of a marine element there, a little bit of a metallic component too. So let me go ahead and pour this back in. Before I do, you can see a nice, rich, deep lime green type color there as well. So let me go ahead and pour that back in. Give this a taste before it cools off too much. The sweetness is present. It's a, again, this is going to be a more of a, a green vegetable type sweetness there. Uh, think of fresh green bean. That's a, a nice positive note. A um, little bit of a sweet pea, a little sugar snap pea in there. I could I could pull that out. Um, the astringency level is um, is quite low. It's a very gentle uh, light dryness hitting on the sides of the, of the back of the tongue, just along the edges there. So it gives it a, a thin, a, 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 a gentle, powdery texture, which is uh, pleasant, not uh, overly drying, puckery type. Also, not a not a metallic element here. Okay. Um, as it cools down a little bit, I, I pick up a little bit more of a metallic component there, but um, it, it, it hits it hit a little bit towards the front, but then it dropped off. Um, so as I look at this tea, and, and now the aftertaste still remains as a, a, with the powdery element, with the sweet vegetable component, a little bit of, yeah, there's still some of the cream spinach coming out as well. So as a whole, nice positive qualities. Uh, extended aftertaste, full, rich element there as well. So I would give this tea a, would give this tea a 91. The other thing to consider: Japanese teas. Some people are concerned. Uh, this particular tea comes from an area that is 150 miles west of Tokyo. So that's distance from nuclear reactors. Uh, this Aya teas are also tested three times. Once. Uh, if I remember correctly, as the fresh leaf, as it is processed into what is called a tincture. Uh, so it's, it, that's part of the, the drying stage, kind of a middle stage there. And then after it is ground into matcha. So you can actually, uh, Aya actually sent me examples of those three tests. And, and if you'd like to look at those, see how they're, what kind of tests those look like, I'd be happy to share that with you as well. So you can email me at Jason at walkertreview.com to find that out. Um, but it's always good to know and, and good to stay informed, but don't become too cautious. Get the full range of information, knowing what teas are safe, what how teas are protected from China, uh, and so that you can make good choices and still enjoy great tea from a, a great country and a great producer. Again, a lot of teas from China, I'm sorry, a lot of teas from Japan were not even affected or were, were safely away from any radiation, any, any winds that blew radiation, a lot of them blew in what, uh, the opposite directions of these, of these locations, of these farms. So come back to Walker Tea Review, find out more about these teas and others.